Washington Post published this story. And the headline is, a majority of the people arrested for capital riot had a history of financial trouble. Well, you don't say. You know, as the riot was happening, we were saying at this show, I wonder if this would be this much unrest in the country if those people just had gotten their third $2,000 check. And then people made fun of me for saying that. Like, oh, yeah, that's what this is about, $2,000 checks. Well, here's the Washington Post owned by the world's Jeff Bezos is telling us that the people who were there were in financial trouble. Trail of bankruptcies, tax problems, bad debts, raises questions for researchers trying to understand motivations for the attack. I said that about the riots in the summer, too. Or not the riots, but the protests. In the summer, I said, do you think those people would be out there risking COVID if they just received their second $2,000 check? Because they, had, they would feel that the government is act, somebody's actually trying to help them. Someone actually is looking out for them. I said, if they gave everybody health care and a $2,000 UBI during the pandemic, you think there'd be people protesting? Around? I, I, my theory is they wouldn't have been. I could be wrong, but that's, but that seems to be what the Washington Post is getting at here. That seems to be what the Washington Post is getting at, what we were saying all along. And a year from now, the, I, I, I have a prediction for the Washington Post. I'm not great at predictions, but here's my prediction. A year from now, the, the headline on the Washington Post is going to be groundbreaking analysis. Most Americans are struggling financially. That's what I, It's going to be a year, not now, in a year that they're going to have a breakthrough headline. The headline should this actually should be the Washington Post just figured out why Trump was elected in 2016. That should be the headline. Desperate people cling to demagogues. Desperate people cling to. So here's a little bit from this. Now, Max, you were there. So I just want to read a little bit and then you can jump in whatever you want. Nearly 60 percent of the people facing charges related to the Capitol riot showed signs of prior money troubles, including bankruptcies, notices of evictions or foreclosures. Bad debts or unpaid taxes over the past two decades, according to an analysis uh, uh, analysis of public records for 125 defendants with sufficient information to detail their financial histories. The group's bankruptcy rate was nearly twice as high as that of the American public. A quarter of them had been sued for money owed to a creditor, and one in five of them faced losing their home at one point, according to court filings. The financial problems are revealing because they offer potential clues for understanding why so many Trump supporters, many with professional careers and few with violent criminal histories, were willing to participate in an attack egged on by the president's rhetoric, painting him and his supporters as undeserving victims. How tone deaf could you be? Hmm, we need potential clues as to why people would cling to a con man like Trump. I wonder if it's because they're desperate. Maybe 40 years of failed neoliberalism. Hmm, we might be onto something there. I mean, this is a little bit more. While no single factor explains why someone decided to join in, experts say Donald Trump and his brand of grievance politics tapped into something that resonated with the hundreds of people who descended on the Capitol in a historic burst of violence. By the way, it might not surprise these people that this paper is uh, owned by someone who's about to become a trillionaire. Mm -hmm. (laughs) in 2011 a study found household income was not a factor in whether a young person supported extreme far right in germany but a highly significant predictor was whether they had lived through a parent's unemployment going through a bankruptcy or falling behind on taxes even years earlier could provoke A similar response. They know it can be lost. They have that history. And then someone comes along and tells you this election has been stolen, says Cynthia Miller Edris, a political science professor, said, and it taps into the same thing. So they're making the Washington Post is making the correlation 
between people having hard economic times or even their parents and them being right wing, being attracted to extreme right wing stuff. Just as everyone's always said. And just so you know, a California man filed for bankruptcy one week before allegedly joining the attack on the Capitol. A Texas man was charged with entering the Capitol one month after his company was slapped with a $2,000 state tax lien. And several young people charged in the attack came from families with histories of financial duress. Now, that's the Washington Post saying that. That's not me saying that. That's not Max. That's not some uh, Jill Stein or some lefty or a socialist newspaper. That's the newspaper owned by a guy who's going to be a trillionaire. That, that That's who's saying that. And what is and so why do you think people are upset and they don't feel like their government's taking care of them? Because this is how the rest of the world is taking care of their workers during covid lockdowns. How are they? Because I, as I say over and over on the show, this isn't happening in any other Western country. I mean, the, them not giving us a UBI and paying if they close your business down, they'll pay your salary. What? what In Germany, 87% of your salary is paid for the duration of COVID. In Sweden, 90%. Singapore, you get $422 per adult for the duration. $2,000 a month in Canada. Canada, they already have Medicare for all, and now they get a $2,000 UBI. And now you know why everybody's nicer up there. (laughs) South Korea, 70% of wages. Uh, Japan, $950 a month for the duration of the COVID. Australia, $750 a month to the low-income earners for the duration. Nigeria gives you money. UK, 85% of your wages are being paid for the duration. Netherlands, 90%. The USA, nothing. And those countries have health care. And these countries have health care, by the way. The United States, the richest country of all of them, giving their people nothing and no health care. Here's from the Gravel Institute. The number of citizens who lost health care coverage since the pandemic began, 14 million in the United States, zero in the rest of the world. So. And then you have Nancy Pelosi saying she's backing an even smaller stimulus because Biden won. So we're going to give you even less. They're going the other way. And then, of course, what does that lead you to? Thousands of cars form lines to collect food in Texas. Thousands. That's a food line. These are food lines. 1.2 million workers filed for unemployment amid COVID-19 spikes, pushing the total in crisis above 55 million. And then, of course, Congress heads home for Thanksgiving without giving anybody any relief. And that's what they were given this whole year, $1,200. That's what the government gave people this whole goddamn year. Uh, By the way, Trump was calling for $2,000 stimulus checks, and our blue house could only cough up $600. So that was that was Trump was calling for two grand. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer were pushing six hundred dollars until Trump came in and said two thousand dollars. And twelve hundred dollars was already a joke. Six hundred dollars is begging for riots. That was December 17th, tweeted by Dylan Cook. And then we got the riots. <laughs> 